if you've watched my videos before, or even if you haven't, I'm going to tell you now, I'm pretty comprehensive and I try to go over everything um, slowly and just really uh, detailed so you can understand it in clarity and it just makes sense to you. Because I find some people go through it really quickly and they'll just do stuff that's natural to them because they've been solving it for so long. But to people who haven't solved it before, it's like, what the heck are you doing? So I'm going to try to make it easy for you guys. That's the point of this. It's a beginner 4x4. Four four. Voila, my cube is scrambled. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you the similarities between the 4x4 four four and the 3x3. Three three. Um, so the first thing you notice is that obviously the 4x4 four four has 16 stickers versus 9 stickers on the 3x3. Three three. And the 4x4 four four has edges, corners, and centerpieces, again, just like the centerpiece, the edge, and the corner on the 3x3, three three, but there are more of them. So there's four centerpieces on the 4x4, four four. I'll clearly point them out, one, two, three, four. And there's four edges, again, on the 4x4, four four, but each edge has two, piece and I'll sh two pieces, and I'll show you what I mean. So each edge, so this right here, that's an edge, this little block, has one, two pieces. So it has four edges that have two pieces each. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges. But it also has four, just four corners, just like a three by three. Now the method that we're gonna be using to solve the four by four is called the reduction method, which is basically taking what you've learned from solving a three by three, which by the way, you should know how to solve a three by three or you won't know how to solve a four by four. It's taking how to solve the 3x3 three three and adding extra steps to it. So that's good. You already know part of how to solve a 4x4. Four four. Um, what you're first going to do is try to make the 4x4 four four resemble a 3x3, three three, and you'll really see what I mean later on. So these are the steps in brief detail. I talked about how there's four centerpieces. The first step is going to be getting the, all the four center pieces to be the same color on every side. So we will have like the four white, and then like the four red, the four orange, etc. So you can see here, all of the centers will be solved, like they all have the same four colors in them. Three by three center pieces are always fixed. So that means that this white center piece right here, no matter which way you turn the layer, or other layers, you can't really like move its position if you know what I mean like this blue centerpiece is always going to be to the right of this red centerpiece with white on top it's just like the order like they can't be switched unless of course you peel the stickers off but on a 4x4 four four, you can really move any piece anywhere so you can take this red centerpiece and move it down here you can same one right here we can move it around, we can really move it anywhere on the cube. So as you're solving the center pieces, you really want to make sure they're in the right color scheme as your cube. So there's usually a standard color scheme and it's probably going to be the same as your 3x3. Three three. So make sure that you know which color goes to the right and left of another color, and like on top and bottom, etc before you scramble up your 4x4. Four four. The second step will be to get all the edges also solved, and that means that they resemble an edge of a 3x3 three three in that they're not random colors like white and red and green and yellow. They're both white white and red red, like you can see. Now, if you know how to solve a 3x3, three three, you're already going to start seeing a familiarity between sorry, let me find the right color, between these two. You see, like, when we make the cross, we'll have, like, the yellow centerpiece right there, both yellow centerpiece, or white centerpieces, I'm colorblind, and then the white-green edge, the white-green edge. So you can already see what we mean by reduction method. We basically take the enlarged center and the enlarged edges and reduce them into, theoretically, one, and then we solve it like a 3x3. Three three. And what I mean by solving it like a 3x3 three three is treating this like one edge so you don't break it up. You just treat it like one edge. So you just 
move around that edge and treat the center pieces like one center piece. So we treat these four pieces like this one piece. So we move around it, right? It's the same as moving the outer layers of this. I hope you can understand this because this is how you're going to be solving. So part one is the centers. Now I already showed you what the centers will look like when they're finished. So you'll, you know the finished product. Now where do you begin? Well the first thing to look for is two center pieces that are both the same color that are connected in a bar. Just two pieces, a two by one little rectangle that's connected, a connection of color. So you see one here, two whites, one here, two yellows, two oranges, two blues. There's a lot to use. Um, when you're solving your cube and let's say you don't have a connection of color, it's really easy to make a connection of color. This part's really just intuitive. You just have to figure it out with without any move sets. So say you have this orange piece here and this orange piece here. You can just slice to make an orange bar. So it's really simple to make that first bar. Um, I like to start with white for my beginner tutorials because white's an easy color to recognize. Um, so I'm just going to start with white. So we see a white bar here. And we're going to look for the other two center pieces. We have one right here and one right here. Now the goal is to get all four of them on the same side. So we have the first bar and we want to make the second bar and then join the two bars up, which just makes sense. So using uh, just again intuition, we basically rotate this face and we can see we're not doing anything to this bar. And now we have these two pieces in a position where we can line them up and now we can move it up to the top layer and remember if we do this obviously we're going to disturb it so we have to find that open slot that open bar right here and put this bar below that open position and now line them up just like so so let's say we have our white bar right here so there's our first white bar and we want to make the second white bar and we see that there's two white pieces right here and this white piece is opposite of the first white bar. Now if we want to join the pieces that's great but we can see that while we've joined these two pieces to form our second bar we've destroyed the first bar up here just like that. So what I like to think of is again you just have to find an open slot where you're not going to destroy anything before making your slice. So you have to op make that open slot right there so when you do the slice, just like so, like that, right? You can see you're not disturbing anything up here. And now, you can move that bar so it's below the empty slot and line it up, just like that. So once we've solved our first center, it's time to move on to the second center. Now, if your cube's color scheme is like mine, white will be opposite yellow. So we're going to be doing the yellow center next, which is like, say for example you did a red center, you'd do the opposite center, so you'd do the orange center. All again is depending on how your color scheme is. Of course, the yellow center is going to be, have to be opposite the white center, so it's going to have to be right here, and that means we have to get all the yellow pieces right here. Now we instantly notice a problem. If we want to move this yellow piece up to where it's supposed to go, we're moving this white bar up with it. So what we have to do is somehow move it up without disturbing anything, right? But anyway, we move the center, <laughs> no matter where we turn it up, we're always going to move something up with it. So that can't be avoided. But there's a solution for this. We move it up. We have also displaced that bar. But we can now rotate the top face, so like that. So you see that I've moved this yellow piece over and now I can move that white bar back to where it was before and you see that now this yellow piece is up there so again I'll recap so I moved the yellow piece up and I moved it out of the way and then moved it back let's say that you want to move a yellow bar up first what you would do is of course just move it to the top layer and you can see that you've 
just place this white bar and now all you're going to do is just turn that top face twice so you have that open slot so that means that you can turn this white bar back without disturbing anything and you put the yellow bar on the top and for the last two pieces you'll notice that although we still have the white center right here we can freely move the inner layers we can freely move these layers because white is on this side and yellow is on this side we can freely move these layers and also of course rotate the layers because the outer layers are not going to screw up the center so we're just going to use our intuition and we're going to pair up the second two pieces to make our bar and now all you have to do is move that last bar up to create our yellow center but hold on we do that we displaced our white bar but now we have nowhere to turn this so we can move it back now there is a solution to this as well what you do is instead of moving the second yellow bar up to the empty slot you actually displace the first yellow bar so I'll show you what I mean carefully here you displace that first bar right so this is the first bar this is the second bar and this is the white center you displace the first bar now you rotate the top two times so that when you bring it back you've brought your yellow pieces back and the white pieces and now you've made both centers so that's a little trick for the 4x4 four four, and you'll find any cube bigger than that alright now it's time to work on the last four centers so we've got our white center solved and we've got our yellow center solved now we need to solve the last four centers and we need to make sure they're in order so that means that we can't have let's say green to the right of red for example on a regular 3x3 three three cube green is to the left of red when white's on top so we have to have green to the left of red as well so gotta be careful of that we have to have the right order so we're gonna look for the easiest center to do first and I see three pieces in an L shape right here that are orange and three pieces in an L shape right here that are blue so I can do either one of these centers I'm gonna do the orange one so basically you can think of this as just one bar with an extra piece joined onto it we can really just break that piece off anywhere we want to I'm gonna show you a trick here this is the last orange center piece and it's on a face that's right next to these three what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this extra piece jutting out from the bar we're gonna break it off but we're also gonna join it up with the last piece at the same time so we're gonna break it off and join it up you see how we did that so if this orange piece right here if it was over there and we did that it wouldn't join up but if it was right there and we broke it off we could join it up right and now we simply pair those two bars up to create our third center so doing the third center you don't have to worry about order yet but the fourth center you really have to worry about order see I could make the blue center right here but you know that if you're looking at it it doesn't go white orange blue it goes white blue orange so that would be backwards if we put blue right here we need to put green right there so we can already see that one green piece is right there sometimes you'll have it where there's actually no pieces of the center that you need on that face so you'll have to bring all the pieces up but now we got kind of lucky we have one piece so we're going to be applying that principle of moving a piece up moving it out of the way and moving it back so I'll show you what I mean since there's only one piece here we're gonna leave it there and we're gonna however create a bar so the easiest way to do this is to bring a piece by slicing it down and you can see I sliced this one down but that didn't create a bar however if this same piece were right here and I sliced it down I would create a bar you see that you want to move a piece here have it in that position create the bar now you've seen that we've displaced this as well so when you do that we displace that orange bar so we have to move this back out of the way so that when we move the orange back up it's not going to affect it so remember the orange is moving this moving these two pieces back right 
So we have to make those two pieces right there. So then we move the orange back, it's empty. And now we have that green bar right there. Now it starts to get a little bit trickier because you always have to be careful which pieces you're displacing when you make a slice. So for example, just doing a simple slice like that could really displace like your centers. Um, so you have to be careful. Um, we we want to get the last bar of the green now, remember? So we want to join the last two green pieces. And again, through our intuition, we line them up, right? And we make that slice. Now we want to see what, what are we doing when we make that slice? Well, you're moving the green and the orange bar up, down there. So we have to move them back somehow. So remember, we use this empty bar right here. Line it up so that when we move it back, we haven't, we've, we've made the second green bar and our centers are still intact. Now, remember that concept that I told you is really important with the yellow, how we move that bar out of the way? Well, we're going to do the same thing, but this time it's on the opposite side. So we see our second green bar right here, our first green bar right there. The easiest way to like join it that you would think would be like a bar right here, a bar right here, and just join it like that. But you can see we're moving the orange out of the way when we do that too. So basically, we're going to, once again, put the bar below the first bar, push the first bar out of the way, this time moving it two times. Now move that face twice, now rotate it two times back. And this will basically solve uh, the two centers by moving the bar out of the way again. And now we move on to the last two centers. One key thing about solving the last two centers is that you still have to worry about order. So on my cube, blue is opposite green and red is opposite orange. So if we solved the red center on this face right here, that wouldn't make any sense. And I'll just show you, it can be done. So let's say I solve the red center right here. Well, now I have red and orange right next to each other. So that doesn't work. What I need to do is I need to put the blue center right here and the red center right there. So if I solve the blue center right there, now you can see the color scheme is right. Red is opposite orange and blue is opposite green. So for the last two centers, so you had made uh, white, yellow, orange, green, and when you are trying to make the last two centers, in our case, uh, red and blue, when you slice, you're going to just place orange and green, right? No matter what you do. So it's going to be you have to slice, move out of the way, move back. Now you got to be careful though, because when you slice, you're going to be bringing one of the other two centers up. So if you slice up, you're going to be moving green up. If you slice down, you're going to be bringing orange down. So whichever direction you slice, you're going to be moving some center. So you can't just slice, move out of the way, and move back. Because now you've destroyed the orange center. Do you see that? So you slice up. You can't just move this like out of the way and back because now you've destroyed the green center. So basically you want to slice and move on the center where it's only your last two centers, if you know what I mean. So there's going to be quite a few cases. As you can see, just by doing a slice and move, I already altered what the last two centers look like. Now once again, you're going to be looking for a bar. So I see a orange or <laughs> red bar and a blue bar right there. So that's what I'll work with. There's one case where you have no bars. So this case right here where you don't have a bar and I'll just do this first so you can really kind of come to grips with it because you might get this case sometime. So basically you see that these two pieces if you make a slice you'll join them in a bar. Now you see you've brought this orange bar down so all you have to do is bring the orange bar back up without disturbing the bar that you've now made. So you use, once again, an empty slot. So you use this slot and move the orange bar back up. 
and now you can see you've even made an L. So you've made your bars and you're good. Let's say you have this case where you have an L on either side and you just have like one corner that's just swapped. So somehow you have to swap these two corners. Well, what I think of it as is I don't even see the blue at all or I don't even see the red at all. I just focus on one color and I say, how can I get that color to be all on one side? Well, do you remember that one case we had before where we had the bar, so say like the blue bar, and then we thought of the other piece as just being hooked onto the bar, like we could break it off at any point, right? So this is the bar, this is the piece we can break off. We can break it off downwards, right? If we break it off downwards, we can get into a position where we make the second blue bar. So we can see if we break it down like that, it's not going to join up. But if we break it down like that, we've made our second blue bar. And now we want to bring the orange bar that we've brought down, we want to bring it back up by using an empty slot. Or we can do something clever and we can actually bring this blue bar up we've made with the orange bar. So when we're bringing the orange bar up, we're also bringing the newly made blue bar up. And we can actually solve that. Another case is when you have both L's and you did what I just showed you. So you break that piece off and you pair it at the same time and you bring it back. But hold on, it's in the wrong color scheme. Now you have blue next to green, which isn't right. What you can do is break this piece off like that, make the bar, but instead of bringing that blue bar back, you can bring the red bar back. And now you're left with this case where you have the four bars. So you have two red bars and two blue bars. Um, what you're going to do here is you can do the same thing that we first learned with our yellow center, is that you move a bar up out of the way, you push it out of the way, and then you bring the other bar back. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to line the bars up, and we can really do it either way, but I'm going to do it with red. So I, I'm going to bring this red bar up and push this red bar out of the way. So I'm going to bring it up, then I rotate that face two times, and I'm bring it back. Okay, so the very last case, you can see that on this face right here, um, we have a red bar and a blue bar. And then on this top face, we have two red pieces that aren't joined and two blue pieces that aren't joined. Now, basically, the goal is going to be to get two red bars and two blue bars, and then we can go from there. So to create the second red bar, uh, we can see that this red piece right here is in the top left position, and then we have a red bar down there. So when we move that up like that, now we're free to move this face around and if we put the second red piece in the top right when we move it back we've created the second red bar. So now we're left with this case again where we have two red bars and two blue bars.